All right, welcome to the first in what we'll be um, planning for maybe five part series on using Microsoft Forms and Power Automate to create tasks in Planner. Uh, so just as a quick overview, if you're not familiar with some of these components, uh, some of these, these apps, let's talk a little bit about what Planner is. So I'm going to jump over to Microsoft Teams here where I have a planner. We have, well, first off, we have a team called Escape Planning. And within there, I created a plan called Escape Tasks. The idea being that we want to provide a way for members of this team to create tasks and track their completion so we'll know which plans are working and which ones are not. Uh, and adding a task in Planner is not difficult. You can simply click Add Task, give it a name like get guard schedule and then set a due date maybe we need that by next Friday and assign it to someone on the team and add that task so it's very quick and easy to add tasks but the fact is that it, it is kind of counterintuitive it's one of those things that's almost too easy that very often you'll get people creating tasks without providing the right detail uh, or without specifying the information that's actually required. So using a form, you can kind of guide them to provide that information. So if we look at a simple plan uh, task creation form I created here in Microsoft Forms, uh, we were asking for a name of the task, a start date, a due date, a description, which is not something you can enter at from the start in planner and then a priority because we want to make sure that you know these are important things to important aspects of that task so we want to make sure we have a way to collect that information uh, so the advantage of using this form over just having them go into planner is that this kind of guides them through what information they need which gives you the the end the net result of having tasks with more complete information as opposed to vaguely named tasks that might not have the details you need. All right, so that is kind of the, 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 the game plan here is we're going to use the form in Microsoft Forms to create tasks in Planner. Um, I'm going to add a link to the, the Planner connector documentation in the description of this video, and that's going to talk about the different actions that are available. Note that some of the actions in that connector are preview or are, have preview versions available, and we are going to use one of those, uh, which we'll talk about in, the, in a minute or two. Uh, but as with any other any other time you're using a preview action in Power Automate or a preview connector, you do want to do so with caution. Uh, between preview and production, things can change. Some preview actions or connectors become premium connectors later. For example, Microsoft Word was available. There was a preview connector to Microsoft Word, which became a premium connector to Microsoft Word. Um, so just understand that anytime you're working with preview stuff, there is a chance things will change between now and when, you know, when you're actually using this later. Um, but what we're using is pretty basic. All right, so the first thing we're going to use in our uh, flow is a create task action and that has three required inputs a group ID a plan ID and a title um, right now all of the plans in planner are connected have to be connected to a Microsoft group there's another type of plan on its way called a roster plan that will not have a group attached how that will work with power on mate I have no idea but when they're available I'll figure it out and I'll let you know uh, but we've got a group ID, we've got a plan ID, which is the name of the plan. And then we need, need to provide a title for the task. All of the other inputs are optional. So the bucket, uh, the start and the due dates, the signed user IDs, color categories, and importance. Uh, importance is what we're, you know, the main reason we're using the preview action is that we can specify the importance of the task uh, from the start. So let's go over to... Uh, Power Automate and start our flow. So we're going to go to Manage My Flows, go to the Create screen, and select Automated Cloud Flow because when we're submitting a form, that is an automated flow. So we'll se select the when a form response is submitted, and we'll just call this uh, 
we'll call it basic planner task creation and click create and as with any other form or flow triggered on a form we need to select the form ID create planner task and then because this trigger is not going to have all of the details all of the information from the submission we need to get those uh, get the details of the response so we will get response details from the Microsoft Forms connector and again we need to specify the form ID and then the response ID which is dynamic data from the trigger so the trigger is basically saying hey someone submitted this form here's the response ID so that's what we're going to use to get the details of it nothing new so far all right so now we've got the response details we want to create a task so I'm going to search for planner uh, so we can see all of the tasks all of the actions available in Microsoft planner and we're going to use the create a task preview you'll, but you'll see there are also options here actions to delete a task list plans uh, get task details there's the basic create a task and some other stuff for right now we're just going to stick with create a task and we're again we're using the preview because it allows us to set one additional field that the standard production one does not all right so in our create a task action we need to specify the group ID select our escape planning group plan ID is going to be escape tasks title this is going to be it's going to come from the task name question on the form so under get response details task name uh, bucket ID we're just going to stick with the to do bucket again maybe in a future video we'll talk about ways you could make that dynamic to create a new bucket or use an existing bucket but we'll just stick with to do for right now because we know that's a bucket that exists in every plan now start date and time um, it's looking for a date time value and even though the questions on the form the start date and the due date are date questions the data is actually coming into Power Automate as a string so it doesn't necessarily know that those are date time values um, since I'm confident that they are I'm going to click see more and we'll select start date and again for the due date we'll have to do the same thing see more select due date um, we're going to talk about assigning user IDs in another video and then the color categories um, there are 24 different categories and they can be enabled for uh, any number of these can be applied to a particular task I'm skipping them for right now because I think they're more easily or more is more beneficial to manage those in planner itself um, but so just that's why we're skipping all of that and at the bottom is priority and if, if you hover over that you'll see that this is actually taking an integer value and a, a range from 0 to 10 um, basically meaning that 0 is the highest priority 10 is the lowest priority so what I've learned in my in testing this before as I was developing the, the content for this video is that zero and one should equate to urgent but zero for some reason is not recognized at all um, not sure why but that's why on our form here I did not use a you know basically I set this scale to be one to ten so basically one will be urgent and then the others will fall into the range as specified there now because this is looking for an integer value the only value that we know or that flow knows for a fact is an integer is that response ID number so we need to use an expression nothing nothing exciting but we're going to use the INT or integer expression so we'll click on expression type in INT open parenthesis and then go to our dynamic content and we want to bring in the importance or priority value click OK and we'll save this 
and we will run a test by submitting that form. So we'll go into the form, open preview, and say, let's say our first task is to uh, plan for tunnel dig under barracks. And the start date is going to be March 21st. The due date is going to be February, I'm sorry, April 1st. And the description will be uh, just some details on that. So tunnel under barracks 25 to outside of second fence. And this is a pretty high priority because we have a lot of people itching to get out of here. So we'll make that priority one and click submit. And we'll go over to our flow. And we can see there it ran four seconds ago. Got the response details. Oh, we forgot a step here. We we meant to to add in the description. So you know what? Let's well first off, let's just see that the task got created. Alright, so we'll delete the demo we created up front. So there is plan for tunnel dig under barracks. We can see that it is an urgent based on the little bell icon there. Um, but what we'll see is that the start date is 320. I thought I set that for 321. And in fact, 321 is that Monday that I selected. Now, the, the problem here is that Planner wants that to be in UTC, whereas I'm setting it as in, in my local time zone, which is... Um, Eastern US. So we need to do a little bit of conversion. So let me delete this task because that's not what we want. And we're going to go back over to our flow. And first off, we're going to add a, ta add a, a step to uh, put the description in there, which we did not. Forgot that the first time, but we can fix it. So I'll click edit. Now we've created the task. Now the task is created, we can update the details of it. So I'm going to add another step. And I'm just going to type in task details and update task details is what we want. So I'll select that one and we need to provide that with the task ID, which we're going to get from the previous create a task action. So there's the ID and then the, the description is going to be the description question on our form. Now the other things that we, the other values we can change here or set here are the references. References are basically for things like attachments. Uh, what I didn't really show there was that in a task you can have tasks can have attachments. Um, where you can attach files from your computer, from Teams, from a link, etc. Um, we may get into that in a future video, but it is kind of complicated, so putting that on the back burner for now. Uh, and then the other thing that we can do in there is set is create checklist items. And checklist items are really useful for kind of parsing out a task into its component steps. Um, so. Basically, if it's you know, if the task is make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, then one of the checklist items is get bread. Next one is get peanut butter. Next one is get jelly. And then you're going through the individual component steps to make up that task. Um, so those are really useful. Um, we're going to talk about those in the probably third video. Uh, but for right now, let's leave that alone. We're, we'll come back to those later. But we also, while we're here, want to address that date disparity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save us a little bit of time and go over to a different flow that I have created. So I'm going to save this and I'm just going to open up my flows in a new window here. And I have a flow I've already built. I'm going to go into the edit view and this is also a really handy thing to know about is that you can copy actions from one 
uh, flow to another. So in this case, I have a scope here called convert dates where I'm converting the time zone of the start date and the due date. Now it happens to be connected to the same form. So I'm in luck and these are going to match up exactly the same. Um, just know that in, if you were connecting to a different form, you would have to basically redefine or reset this base time um, to the fields from your current form. But I'm going to copy this scope from this flow, which was my test create planner task, into our basic planner task creation. So inside here, I'm going to add an action, go to my clipboard, paste in convert dates, and let's just make sure that that picked up and that looks good. And if you did have to fix it, I'll just show you how we would go about fixing that. You just basically blank out the, the base time that's there. And then in get response details, you'll select start date. Same thing for the due date. We'll just make sure that it's getting the right one. Now, just to clarify how this, what this conversion is doing, it's basically saying, take the time that's in this field put it in this format string. This is a particular, this is not one of the pre-built or predefined format strings, but it is actually what Planner wants. So I took a few minutes to actually build it out that way. Um, and format strings are pretty standard to, uh, to understand, but good things to know about. Uh, and then the source time is gonna be our local time or my local time, Eastern, US and Canada and the destination time is going to be UTC. It seems backwards uh, because normally Power Automate is always looking at times as UTC so you would think that this start date is being fed in as UTC but it's actually being fed in in U Eastern US time. I need to convert it to UTC so that it will be set at the appropriate time or the appropriate date. Because even though there's no time value associated with that, the fact that I am five hours behind UTC means that it the days are going to, to get thrown off by one day. Now there are other ways we could have adjusted this. I've just chose to use the convert time zone for simplicity. So I'm just gonna plug in our converted start time and our converted due date. Hit save. And let's test this again, and we'll just rerun that last run, that last uh, form submission or flow run. And it completed. So now we can see it converted the base time of 321 to 321. Nothing exciting. Uh, but if we go over to our planner plan here, refresh it to speed things along. There we will find our plan for tunnel dig under barracks with a due date of 4-1. And we can see that it does start, in fact, on 321, is due on 4-1. We're in good shape. Uh, so, and we'll see that the priority is set to urgent. And there are the, the description that we provided is now in the notes field in the task. Uh, so that's all we're going to do today. Um, let me just jump over back over to the PowerPoint because we talked about the create task options. We did the update task details. Uh, again, references we might get to in a later video checklist we are definitely doing in another video. Uh, and then we'll also talk about task assignment in the next video uh, because it is kind of important. Uh, so that is the end of the video. Uh, hopefully this is useful to you and tune into the next one where we're going to talk about how to basically different ways that we can assign the task because just creating the task is great uh, but very often those tasks if the tasks just get created and doesn't people don't know that they're there to go and assign them to themselves or there isn't someone who is specifically assigning them to people um, you want to have a way to get them assigned to the appropriate person and that's what we'll, we'll talk about different ways to, to kind of tackle that problem in the next video.